and i pray that this period will be a special period a unique period in the presence of the lord for you for everyone in jesus name god loves you and i will give you all that he has prepared for you without any hindrance in jesus name father we thank you we bless your name for everyone here and all the people you have used and all the people you are using to make such a gathering like this effective effectual lord i pray as you bless us bless all the leaders all the workers everyone visible and not so visible in jesus name lord i pray that your desire for everyone are you sending Emmanuel to the world and to us that desire will be fulfilled in Jesus name thank you Lord for the answer in Jesus name we pray God has blessed you please you can sit down as we come to our faith clinic this morning we're talking about Emmanuel Emmanuel jesus the son emmanuel jesus the son the son of god we're looking at matthew chapter 1 verse 21 matthew chapter 1 verse 21 and she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name jesus for he shall save his people from their sins. Verse 22. In verse 22, it tells us now, All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Look at verse 23. It says, Behold, a virgin shall be a child, and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel which being interpreted is God with us Emmanuel Jesus the son the angel appeared to Joseph and confirmed what the watch he saw in Mary the pregnancy, the conception, because they had not come together as husband and wife. And the angel confirmed that this is of the Spirit of God, of the Holy Ghost, and said, what she will bring forth will be according to the fulfillment of prophecy, and it will be what I say here and prophesy that Jesus Christ will be born, born of a virgin, his name called Jesus, and he is Emmanuel. And then he interprets that for us. He says Emmanuel means God with us, the God of creation, the God of power, the God of all might, and the God of all possibilities God with us. Look at Luke chapter 1. In Luke chapter 1, reading from verse 31, and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb. Here is the, an angel again, angel Gabriel, coming from heaven and coming to Mary directly. Actually, this happened first, before the one we read in Matthew because she had not conceived now in the case of matthew she is conceived already and the angel affirmed and the angel enlightened joseph that this is of the holy ghost and this is in fulfillment of the prophecy of the word of god now talking to mary the angel said behold thou shall conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name jesus look at verse 32 in verse 32 she 
shall be he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest and the lord god shall give him shall give unto him the throne of his father david in verse 33 it says he referring to christ he referring to Emmanuel, he referring to the one that will come. He said, He, Jesus, He, Emmanuel, shall reign. It's not coming just to the earth, it's coming in fulfillment of prophecy. And when He comes, He will reign. A reign in Israel, in the house of Jacob. He'll reign all over the world. He'll reign in the hearts of men. He'll reign in the kingdom that he is going to establish. He shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. He reigns now evangelically in our hearts. And he's going to reign everlastingly all over the world and of his kingdom there shall be no end verse 34 in verse 34 then said mary unto the angel how shall this be seen i know not a man she confirmed that she was a virgin and she had never met with any man not even with Joseph and he says how shall this be that I will conceive it's never happened scientifically but it will happen supernaturally and he says how shall it be how can this be I've never heard of any virgin conceiving and bringing forth a son and the angel affirmed in verse 35 he says and the angel answered and said unto her the holy ghost shall come upon thee and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee therefore also that holy thing holy christ holy jesus holy god holy emmanuel that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the son of god jesus the son of god emmanuel the son of god that's what we're looking at this morning and we're dividing the message to three parts number one we're looking at the revelation of the eternal christ the son of god number two we're looking at the redemption and regeneration by emmanuel the emancipating emmanuel the son of god the son number one is revelation the revelation and the recognition of the eternal Emmanuel, the Son. Number two is the redemption and the regeneration by the by Emmanuel, the emancipating Son. And number three will be the reformation and the righteousness through Emmanuel that is the Emmanuel that empowers us the empowering Emmanuel the son let's look at number one number one we're looking at the revelation and the recognition of eternal Emmanuel the son he tells us in Matthew and he tells us that this son that will be born will be called 
Emmanuel. If we're looking at three things here, number one, the revelation. Number two, the recognition. Number three, the realization. Number one, the revelation of the eternal Christ, the Son of God. Number two is the recognition of the eternal conqueror, the Son of God. Number three is the realization of the eternal captain, a captain, and the captain of our salvation, the Son of God. Look at number one there. Number one is the revelation, the revelation of Christ. The Son of God. In Matthew chapter 16, reading from verse 16. Matthew chapter 16, verse 16. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Thou art the Christ, the Son of of the living God. And then in verse 17, verse 17 says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Bajuna, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. When you come to the Lord and you have connection with the Lord, you are converted unto the Lord. You've left all behind like Simon Peter. And now you come and you are following the Lord Jesus Christ. The Father makes a revelation to you. And there will be no doubt in your heart. And there will be no maybe or what if in your heart because you have come to the Lord. You are reconciled unto the Lord through the Lord Jesus Christ and the Father who sent His only begotten Son into the world reveals the Son unto you, reveals Him as the very Son of God. And so when Jesus asks, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Peter answered by revelation, Thou art the Son of the living God. And Jesus confirmed, That's not knowledge that you have in a natural way. That's not the knowledge you have in the normal way, reaching the, reading the books that are written by men of flesh and blood. But my Father, has revealed things unto you. It's been prophesied. And revelation comes now that this is the fulfillment of prophecy. Look at Isaiah chapter 9. And we're reading from verse 6. It says, For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And a government shall be upon a shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, because of the wonders he'll perform. Counselor, because he'll counsel and command us into the realization of the salvation that Christ was going to bring. The mighty God, God with us. It will be Emmanuel. He'll be the mighty God. He'll be the unfailing God. He'll be the all-powerful God. And is the everlasting Father, the Father of eternity, the Prince of Peace. Look at verse 7. In verse 7 of the increase of his kingdom, reigning over Israel and reigning over the house of Jacob and reigning over the whole world, the increase of that kingdom and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it 
and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever and it says the zeal of the lord of hosts shall perform this micah chapter 5 reading from verse 2 in micah chapter 5 verse 2 but thou bethlehem ephrata thou though thou be little among the thousands of judah yet out of thee shall come forth unto me that is to be ruler in israel talking about the same christ talking about the same jesus talking about the same emmanuel that will rule and reign over the house of israel and over the world and it says whose goings forth had been from old from everlasting jesus did not come to into existence just at the time of his conception or at his birth he had been from all eternity that's why we refer to him as the eternal christ the son of god he has been from of old from everlasting and in colossians chapter 1 reading from verse 16 for by him were all things created he had existed before creation he had existed from all eternity and by him the father created the whole universe for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are on earth visible and invisible whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or power all things were created by him and for him verse 17 in verse 17 and he is before all things he is before all things eternal everlasting had been from the be since or before the beginning of the world and by him all things consist and when you're a real child of god the lord reveals that to you in his word and he reveals that to you by the father like simon peter flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you but my father which is in heaven look at number two there number two there is the recognition of the eternal conqueror the son of god he is the eternal conqueror eternal christ eternal conqueror and in um, matthew chapter 27 reading from verse 4 54 now when the centurion and they that were with him watching jesus saw the earthquake and those things that were done they feared greatly exceedingly saying truly this was the son of god truly this was the son of god he had conquered and because of that conquering power the eternal conqueror proved himself and even the unbelievers the sinner the centurion watching with all the people that were there they said truly this one that conquered so victoriously triumphantly like this this truly was the son of god acts chapter 9 
reading from verse 2 Acts chapter 9 verse 2 and desired they that is this is Saul now he desired that letters should be given unto him and that if he saw anyone following the way of Christ he will take them out of their houses he'll imprison the one who was going on the way to Damascus the Lord himself met him and even called his name Saul Saul why persecutest thou me who art thou Lord as he looked up and he said I am Jesus and he conquered that man he conquered that man and he will conquer through your life in your life in Jesus name you recognize him that this is he that comes to conquer we're looking at number three number three is the realization of the eternal captain the son of god realization you come in your own life and you perceive from your own heart that this is christ the conqueror as well as the captain the captain of our salvation we're looking at hebrews chapter 2 reading here from verse 9 hebrews chapter 2 reading from verse 9 but we see jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death crouched with glory and honor that he by the grace of god should taste death for every man he becomes the captain of our salvation and he tasted death for every man and then in verse 10 verse 10 says for it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering the Christ the captain and the conqueror once it becomes the Christ in your life it'll become the conqueror in your life I said it'll become the conqueror in your life and it'll be the captain of your salvation leading you out of sin into the salvation of the Lord that is the revelation of the eternal Christ the Son of God we come to point number two point number two the redemption and the regeneration by the emancipating Emmanuel the Son he is the Redeemer and he is the emancipator he is the one that regenerates us that converts us that changes our lives from the inside to the outside because he is the emancipating Emmanuel look at three things here number one the redemption provided by Jesus number two we're looking at the regeneration performed by Jesus and number three we're looking at the restoration promised through Jesus the emancipating Emmanuel look at number one number one we're looking at the redemption he came to redeem he came to set us free he came to move us out of 
all the deprivations and he came to bring us into fellowship with God, into reconciliation with God, and into a new life, a new life in Christ, a new life that we live after the pattern and the model of the Lord Jesus Christ and it is redemption redemption look at Romans chapter 3 reading from verse 24 Romans chapter 3 verse 24 it says being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. That redemption you only find in Jesus. That redemption you only experience in Jesus. You have to come out of your sin. Come out of your natural self. Come out of everything you have been. Everything you have done. And everything you have planned. And you come out and come out to the Lord and repent and when you repent turning away from sin believing on the Lord who died for you that faith in Christ brings redemption unto you and you are justified you were condemned by sin condemned damned and doomed but now because you have Christ your Lord and Savior. The word of God says very clearly now, you are justified freely. Why freely? Because he paid each all. He paid for your guilt. He paid for your condemnation. He paid for your evil that you have done. And because he paid the whole price, nothing left to be done that has not been done by Christ for you to be saved and for you to be redeemed and for you to have this redemption from heaven and for you to be justified have salvation have justification have redemption it says being justified freely freely so that you don't think I need to pay this to get salvation freely. I need to do this to have salvation freely. I need to go there, go there, go to Jerusalem before I can have salvation freely. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Look at verse 25. In verse 25, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood faith in his blood instead of you dying he died for you instead of you paying for your sin for your evil with eternal suffering unending suffering now because of what he had done he shed his blood for you and you believe you have faith in that blood he says whom God has set forth to be a propitiation a covering a cleansing an atonement through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission for the forgiveness for the blotting out of the sins that you have committed in the past through the forbearance of God. Look at verse 26. In verse 26, to so declare, I say, at this time is righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus we believe in Jesus therefore the redemption comes to us by what he has done and he did that for you he did that so that you will not perish in your sin you will be saved if you have not been saved 
if you don't have the evidence and the and the voice of the spirit of god saying you'll be saved from all your sin this is your time i said this is your time and it will redeem you from all iniquity in jesus name in colossians chapter 1 reading from verse 13 colossians chapter 1 verse 13 was delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son that's what happens when we're saved when we're born again when we come to christ the redeemer he translates us from the kingdom of darkness where the powers of darkness made us to keep on doing evil operating and uh, generating evil from the heart of sinners now when you meet christ when christ comes into your life he transfers you and translates you from the kingdom of darkness and he brings you to the kingdom of his dear son look at verse 14 in verse 14 whom in whom we have redemption not that we're going to have in the future right now at this time at the moment of repentance and faith in the lord we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sin titus chapter 2 reading from verse 14 who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity internal iniquity he redeems us external iniquity he redeems us secret iniquity he redeems us and habitual iniquity he redeems us if you have been redeemed there'll be no iniquity again in your life if there's iniquity in your heart iniquity in your action iniquity in your mouth iniquity in your habit iniquity in your interaction and relationship you have not been redeemed you don't have the redemption of christ when you have the redemption of christ he redeems us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works he makes us peculiar he makes us different he makes us distinguished from the people around us and your life becomes distinct becomes unique becomes above reproach above any evil because you are redeemed to be a peculiar person and now you are zealous not of evil works if you are zealous of evil works you are not born again yet if you are zealous of secret sin you are not born again yet if you are zealous for hurting other people destroying other people destroying their lives scattering their families you are not born again yet when you are born again you are redeemed you are forgiven you are justified your life becomes new you become so peculiar not peculiar in evil you are peculiar in the goodness of god and you are zealous of good works we're looking at number two here number two we're looking at the regeneration performed by jesus the eternal emmanuel regeneration performed by the eternal emmanuel we're looking at titus chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 5 titus chapter 3 verse 5 not by works of righteousness which we have 
done. There are people that pride themselves in the works of religion, in the works of their traditional belief. The people that pride themselves in the money they have given, in the work they have done. And they think that those works in religion and those works in their normal life is a good natured man. It's a good natured woman and she does this and does this and does that. The people that think they're redeemed and saved by that, no. Regeneration does not come. Righteousness does not come. The new life does not come. Entering into heaven does not come by the works of righteousness which you have done. But according to his mercy he saved us when he knew we couldn't save ourselves according to his mercy he saved us when he knew we were powerless helpless in saving ourselves he saved us when he saw that all the religiosity all the zeal in religion like Saul of Tartus could not save us he according to his mercy saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the holy ghost washing of regeneration he washes us in his blood he cleanses us in his blood he transforms our lives through his blood and that change it's called regeneration by the washing of the Holy Ghost. It tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, reading from verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. It says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Corinthian church, members of the church, Corinthian church, you'll be coming to church. You'll be hearing the word of God. You speak in tongues. And you manifest all these uh, kind of so-called supernatural power. But don't you know that the righteous, the sinful, the carnal, the worldly, the evil man, the evil woman. Don't you know that the righteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Don't let your heart deceive you. Don't let your preconceived idea deceive you. Don't let religion deceive you. Don't let the praise of men deceive you. Be not deceived. Don't let false doctrine deceive you. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor the effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Verse 10. Nor thieves, those who steal, maybe in their family, from their parents, those who steal, maybe in the church, dipping their hands into the offering in the church. Those who steal, they are told to buy something and then they must get something out of that. You are a thief. Don't you know that thieves or the covetous, no, the drunkards, no, the revilers, no extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. That's why we come to Christ. The eternal Christ that comes to cleanse and to forgive and to change and to redeem and to transform our lives. That's why it says in verse 11, verse 11, and such was some of you. Those who are like that before, they were no more like that after salvation. That habit did not continue with them. That plan of sinning and sinning and sinning 
did not continue with them and such was some of you but ye are washed when you come to christ that christ eternal emmanuel that had this plan and purpose from all eternity what does he do he washes you but he are washed but she are sanctified but she are justified in the name of the lord jesus and by the spirit of our god the first time you come to the lord in true repentance and real faith in christ it washes you it cleanses you it changes the pattern of your life but there's another thing look at um, ephesians chapter 5 reading from verse 25 ephesians chapter 5 verse 25 husbands love your wives even as christ loved the church and gave himself for each he gave himself for the church why verse 26 it says in verse 26 that he might sanctify and cleanse might sanctify and cleanse when you are saved the external sins that you have been committing from the time you knew right from wrong you knew your left from your right all those sins he washes away he blots away he reconciles you with god he brings righteousness into your life but now after that salvation that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word and you must have a definite coming unto the lord saying i know that on the inside i need something that is deeper than salvation and then you consecrate your heart your life unto the lord and he washes you he cleanses you he sanctifies you what the result verse 27 in verse 27 that he might present each the church unto himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any sort of thing but that should be holy he wants the church to be holy he wants the members to be holy he wants the people that name the name of christ to be holy in the heart in the home in the secret in the public anywhere everywhere to be without spot without wrinkle without any such thing but to be holy and to be without blemish that's why he came and if you don't allow him to do that you waste his coming you waste his death and you waste the purpose of his coming into your life we're looking at number three here number three we're looking at the restoration promised through jesus the emancipating emmanuel the restoration what does that mean what adam lost christ the second adam the last adam has come to restore what does that mean the purity the perfection and the likeness unto god like us god said let us make man in our image the image that man lost the goodness of god that man lost christ came to restore and the innocence that we lost 
You see, when Adam and Eve were created, they were innocent from evil. Every evil, every form of evil. But now Christ has come because he's the promised one to restore that lost innocence, the life of purity, continual purity, continual goodness, continual grace of God, the life that we lost. Christ has come to bring a restoration. That's why we have this point, the restoration promised through Jesus, the emancipating Emmanuel. How do we get that? What do we do on our part to show God we want that restoration? And then in your personal life, if you are innocent, you were saved, you were born again, your life was above reproach. But something happened. Temptation came. The tempter came in your life and you fell. And you have remained in that situation of fallenness. You're falling and you're remaining there. Christ has come. And the reason he gives us, the Lord gives us Emmanuel, is so that you will be restored. Look at your life today. Is it like it was innocent, sinless, spotless, gracious, justified? As you were 15, 20 years ago, if something had changed for the negative and you are falling and you are no more as righteous, as pure, as holy, Christ has come to give us, to give you in particular, the promised restoration. It comes through Christ and he is the emancipating Emmanuel. Don't cover up. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Don't cover up. My purpose, my plan of doing this, everybody will have an excuse. The thief has an excuse. I am taking this because of that they accuse. I'm drinking because of everybody has excuse. I am fighting because I need to defend myself. Everybody has excuse. Don't hide under any excuse. If you hide under any excuse, restoration will not come. You will not desire restoration. You will not pray for the restoration. You will not have the restoration. But when you leave all excuses and you throw them away and you come to Christ, there is restoration that is promised through Jesus, the emancipating Emmanuel. Look at Acts chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 19. Acts Chapter 3, verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. Your sins will not be blotted out by religious activity. Your sin will not be blotted out by just saying, I am sin, I am sin, I am sin. That's empty confession when there's sin in your life. Repent ye therefore, turn away from sin, and be ye converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Look at verse 20. In verse 20, and he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, in verse 21, verse 21, it says, Whom the heaven must 
receive until the time of restitution that word actually means restoration of all things which god has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began the restoration of everything promised by the lord since the world began it tells us in first peter chapter one reading from verse nine receiving the end of your faith even the salvation of your souls in verse 10 verse 10 says of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently prophesied who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you in verse 11 it says searching what or what manner of time the spirit of christ which was in them did signify when he testified beforehand of the sufferings of christ and the glory that should follow verse 12 unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves but unto us the did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the holy ghost sent down from heaven with things the angels desire to look into and in second peter chapter one reading there from verse three second peter chapter one verse three according as his divine power has given unto us all things it's come to restore everything everything we lost in adam the innocence the salvation the righteousness the pure life and the pure heart he has come to restore everything unto us and it says now he has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and to virtue look at verse 4 in verse 4 whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these she might be partakers of the divine nature we lost that in adam adam and eve were created in the nature of god divine nature the nature that does good that lives righteously uniformly every moment of their days they lost that a restoration has now come that he gives us the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss we're coming to point number three here and point number three we have the reformation and the righteousness through the empowering Emmanuel. He empowers us. He makes us to be able to do what we couldn't do before. Righteousness. And to live a pure life. A glorious life that we couldn't live before. Because now he comes he regenerates us he makes us righteous and he reforms us the our reformation and righteousness through 
the empowering Emmanuel, the Son. We're looking at three things here. Number one, repentance. Number two, reliance. Number three, remembrance. Number one, repentance in fullness before the all-knowing Emmanuel. Number two, reliance by faith on the all-pardoning Emmanuel. Number three, remembrance of the faithfulness of Jesus, the all-sufficient Emmanuel. Look at number one there. Number one, we're looking at repentance in fullness not repentance partially in fullness everything we need to draw everything we need to forsake everything we know will not please god whether small or great whether common or uncommon whether usual or habitual everything that will not glorify god in our lives repentance in fullness before the all-knowing emmanuel mark chapter 1 reading from verse 14 now after that john was put in prison jesus came into galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of god preaching the gospel and what's the gospel look at verse 15 it says and saying the time is fulfilled the kingdom the kingdom of god is at hand repent ye and believe the gospel you know there are people who don't understand the gospel when you talk of repentance they say uh -uh. <laughs> give me the gospel give me the good news give me the glad tidings give me the gospel you cannot have the good news until you drop the bad news of your life your life is sending bad news to heaven the news of your rebellion of your evil of your sinfulness your life is showing demonstrating bad news bad news that you have committed yourself to satan you have to repent of that before the gospel will take effect in your life preaching the gospel to every creature go tell the sinners let them keep sinning and then favor is coming to them that's not good news that's false doctrine let them go on stealing and then the grace of god will cover them that's not good news that's not gospel that's false doctrine let them keep on in their immoral life and let the good news come to them that's not good news that's false doctrine jesus said repent ye turn away from sin turn away from evil and then you can believe the good news in luke chapter 19 reading from verse 8 luke chapter 19 verse 8 and Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. That's restitution. If you are really sincere about repentance and you hate what you have done, you will not be making use of the things you stole. You will sell them and bring the money back to the owner. And it says, Zacchaeus said, 
half of my goods I give to the poor. Your life will change. The stinginess will get out of your life. This is the restoration, the repentance that God desires. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, and Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come after repentance. This day is salvation come after the willingness to make restitution of all he had taken by false accusation from other people. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house for so much as he also is the son of Abraham. Look at verse 10. The Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Come to number two here. Number two is reliance by faith on the all pardoning Emmanuel. We rely on him. We have faith in him. We trust him. Our faith is built on the faithfulness of Emmanuel. That what he has said, he will do. Return, repent, come out of those evil things and rely on the Lord. And thou shalt be saved and thou shalt be restored. Acts chapter 20, we're looking at verse 20. And how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but I showed you, and I have taught you publicly, and from house to house, in verse 21, they say, fine, but to the Jews, and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God. You see that? And faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Repentance toward God. All that God has commanded. And we are disobeyed, disregarded, denied the commandments of God and the authority of God upon our lives. Repent. Repentance toward God. That comes first. And then our faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at James chapter 2. Reading from verse 17. James chapter 2 verse 17. Even so, if faith, if it has not works, is dead. Being alone. Faith, relying on God, on the mercy of God, believing the gospel. If it does not have the work of repentance, the evidence of repentance, the sorrow for sin, for everything that you have done, if it does not have words, it's dead. And dead faith cannot save. Look at verse 20. In verse 20, but... Will thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Faith without repentance, without the action that shows we hate what we did in the past. We repent of what we've done in the past. Will, you, will thou know, O vain man? Those who say, I believe, I believe, and believe. And they keep on doing the same old sinful, evil things, works of darkness. It says, a vain man, a vain woman. And will you know, O vain man, vain woman, that faith without works is dead? Verse 26. In verse 26, for at the body without the spirit is dead. So faith without works is dead also. Let's come to number three here. Number three is the remembrance of the faithfulness 
of Jesus, the all-sufficient Emmanuel. He's faithful. And our faith is based on his faithfulness that what he has promised that he will do. Look at the name of Jesus here in Revelation chapter 3 verse 14. Revelation chapter 3 verse 14. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things says the Amen that Jesus and says the true witness and the faithful the faithful the beginning the origin the author of the creation of God there is called the faithful the faithful he is faithful and if you repent if you turn away from your sin and you come to rely on him he will save you he will restore you he will transform your life remember he is the faithful one in second peter chapter one reading from verse 15 moreover i will endeavor that she may be able after my departure after my disease to have these things always in remembrance always in remembrance that jesus is faithful that the promises will be fulfilled that the faithfulness of god reaches unto heaven and that whosoever will come to him with repentance and call upon the lord the lord will save him and the lord will transform his life remember the faithfulness of god judge chapter 1 verse 17 but beloved remember ye the words which was spoken remember ye the words when you come to prayer now remember the words that were spoken and after you end the prayer remember the words that are spoken and when you get up and then you go through life as you live your life every day don't live your life in forget forgetfulness of the words that have been spoken remember the words that was spoken when temptation comes and it appears the devil is pushing you or your flesh is pushing you or the carnality that had not been destroyed in your heart is pushing you remember the soul that sinneth it shall die remember the words that were spoken you see the people uh, you know people generally they don't live victoriously because although they have heard the words that were spoken they don't remember at the time of temptation they don't remember at the time when the devil is gambling with their lives they don't remember our victory our salvation and our security remains on the fact is built on the fact that we remember always remember beloved remember ye the words that were spoken before of the apostles of our lord jesus christ remember is coming the king of kings and the lord of lords and he is the faithful revelation chapter 19 reading from verse 11 revelation chapter 19 verse 11 and i saw heaven opened and behold a white house and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true and in righteousness the see judge and make war his name faithful and true faithful and true he is faithful remember his word repent 
and believe yet the gospel. Today, is salvation come to this house. And if thou shalt believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Christ died for your sin, he was raised again for your justification. As we believe that and remember that, thou shalt be saved. If you have found the victorious life difficult, impossible in your life, and you're falling and falling and falling, and your life now is yoked, captured by the weakness 10 years ago, 15 years ago, because now you are prayerless too. You hear much of the word, but you are not able to do what you are hearing. The time of renewal has come and the time of restoration has come and the time of righteousness redemption in the lord has come remember his word come to the lord forget about religious activity religious works all those things will not save it is as you put your faith implicit in the faithfulness of jesus our redeemer the all-sufficient emmanuel that's when that salvation that restoration that righteousness will come in your life repent repentance a lie reliance remember remembrance of his faithfulness and whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. 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 We'll rise up now and from the depths of our hearts, we'll talk to the Lord in prayer. Open your mouth and tell the Lord. Then just stand there meditating. And my brother, my sister, my friend, you know that your life needs a renewal, a restoration, coming back to the Lord to live the life that glorifies God. Don't say, I have activity. Forget all those activities. Abandon those activities and make sure you are saved. You are restored. Don't just say, I'm at the retreat here to do this and to do that. What if the rapture takes place before we finish the retreat? And your soul is not restored. And you don't have the assurance of salvation. And you go from day to day, from week to week, in activity, 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 and you are not saved. The harvest is ended. Christ now is coming. And you have been in the church. Active, active, active. Zealous. But you are not free from sin. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. We've just heard the word of God on repentance. And that man that is shouting there, that's not the work of repentance. That's not the work of somebody who honors God, respects God, and respects the word of God. We didn't come here to play. And we didn't come here for anyone that will ridicule the word of God and ridicule prayer. We come here that Emmanuel will work in our lives and we we'll want to have real communion with the Lord. All those uh, people that forget themselves, they forget their salvation, they forget their renewal in the Lord. Don't play any tricks here. Don't try to control the church of God with your carnality, backsliding, and sinfulness. Let's come 
in repentance before the Lord and say, Lord, here is where I've been. I need this change. I need this transformation. I need this salvation. That's why we came. We didn't come here to, you know, be fooled by everybody on the Holy Ghost to control our meeting at the retreat. Don't want a carnal man, a sinful man, a backslider, and a child of hell to control the meeting of the saints of God. Pray from your heart and say, Lord, here I am. I want to follow the Lord. That's when the blessing of the Lord will come in your life. We have heard the word of